Hello again, part two. Um, I went ahead and reblended. I asked for some help and I, I felt with my hand and saw there were plenty of white spots still left, so I reblended this. Um, I had my blindfold on the entire time, so as you can see, this is what it now looks like. Um, so same thing, yellow and green, yellow in the middle. And um, sorry about the kitty, Spanky is very interested to see what we're doing. Um, for anyone who was wondering why I bother to have the light on, because that was another question I got, well if you're blind, why do you bother to have the light on while you paint? It's just socially acceptable. Do I need it? No. But it's nice to have them, and it looks better. Uh, so yeah, I had the light on for answering that question. All right. So for the tree, I'm just going to use black. Um, I keep my white in a very large jar, the jar it came in, which feels different than the rest, so I do not bother to put it in a mason jar with braille label because I know it's white. So I will use this for the highlights um, later on. So for a tree, uh, a good way to get the texture of a tree is to use a palette knife and scrape your canvas to get kind of that bark texture because when it dries it will make the texture that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and put my blindfold back on and show you how I draw a tree completely blind. scarf hating me. Oh dear. There we go. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's over my head, over my eyes and tire. I cannot peek at all. All right. So I got my black in the jar. Same thing as last time. We're going to use a palette knife and scoop out. I grabbed a new paper plate. I usually don't, but for this purpose, I did just to make sure that it didn't blend into my yellow and to give you guys a nice clean palette to look at. So, here we go. Scoop out of jar. Get a nice glob on the plate there. Right there, glob on plate. There you go. And scrape it off. Set it aside and put the lid back. Okay, so I use for drawing a smaller, sort of angled, sort of square. Well, I think it was meant to be an angle brush at one point. It probably still is. It feels more square to me, but hey, whatever. It's a small, straight-edged brush. You can use any size that you want. I chose this one because it's easier for me to control when it's smaller. So I'm going to um, find my paint. There we go. Find my paint with the brush. Pull out away from the glob. Flip my brush and pull out again. Pull, pull, pull. That way I've loaded both ends. And I'm going to use, using my hand, because this is now dry and I can without fear of finger marks all over. So what I do to, um, <clears throat> if I don't necessarily know what a tree looks like, I would go out and actually feel a tree and figure out what shapes. We have plenty of them in our neighborhood. So every tree sort of starts out with kind of a V shape. So I'm going to take my hand and follow it down. We're going to start down and then we're going to go about a finger length over maybe however thick you want it go down and once again using your hand find your top there you go and from here what you can do is follow your hand over kind of square it off you don't have to make it exact because it, you know it's a tree it's a good thing about trees so for making tree branches you start out on your trunk and you use pressure to make it thick. And as you're going up, you kind of twist your brush and lift the pressure a little bit. Start again. You could start within the tree trunk. Start within, nice, thick pressure. Up, 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 let it go. Don't do them all the same. Tree branches are different. Make them different. They're quite possibly one of the best indicators of difference I've ever seen. Some short, some tall, some thicker, some thin. Grab more black here. Oops. Yeah, my hands get covered in paint. Give up any knowledge or any notion of a clean YouTube painter now because I am not one. And I'm going to try and fill in this as evenly as possible. Now, if I don't get it all, that's okay. If I do, hurrah for me. 
Now, you can always ask the camera guy if you want. Are there any spots that need filling in in this tree? Uh, no. No? It's all black? Well, there's actually one in the middle. Okay, now, when you ask for help, guys, it's the, uh, middle's good. Now, is it up or down from where my finger is? Uh, over. Over to the left or over to the right? Left. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Right there. Right here? Okay. Yep. And you just push your brush down because you still have a lot of paint there's on there. There's also one up. Okay, up from where my finger is. Keep going. Up. Keep going. Keep going. Right there. Okay. All right. And add as many or as few branches as you would like. Again, if you're not sure where you are, that's the good thing about a tree. You just kind of use your hands. Another good way to add texture, you guys, I use is modeling paste. Um, it takes a while to dry, which is why I didn't use it today. But you uh, put it on, it's like a thicker, mod uh, thicker sort of paste. And when it dries, it dries white. So you would want to paint over it if you want a black tree. And um, you can paint it in any color you want. And it gives a lot more texture than what actual paint does. So if you wanted a lot of texture, use modeling paste. All right. So I kind of like the shape. This branch is kind of going in a halo effect sort of shape. Add a few little ones, very, very little pressure there. And for my texture, as I said earlier, palette knife. And it can be, oops, that's not the color I wanted. Wow. See? That's why it helps to check your equipment. Where did I put my palette knife? I had it. Well, I'll just wipe this one off and use this one. Oh, there we go. It was the one I was looking for. <laughs> I'm so smart. So again, we're going to use our hands. Acrylic paint dries very fast. And you're just going to kind of, wherever, it can be random, but don't make them straight. Kind of curve, kind of go in odd directions. You're going to just scrape the knife against the canvas. Now don't stab it. I mean, unless you want a hole in the canvas and you're just feeling particularly angry that day, stab. But I'm not, so don't stab it. Scrape. Some short. Some long. Give it a good wiggle. And if you are happy with it, that is your artwork. Now, if you want to add leaves, what I would do is take a brush and whatever colors you want and just kind of tap it. Just sort of tap along the ends of your branches. That will give a very good impressionistic look. If you want more realistic, I trace, because drawing is not my strong suit whatsoever. So, I, um, wow, I've done it. So, thanks guys. That is not a tree. Wowzers. Is that it? Yes.